I hate videos. Now you may be wondering, if I hate videos, what the heck am I doing here? Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are in the world today. If you're watching live and you can hear me, can you let me know, please? I just want to confirm that everything is working. Um, please confirm that you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me, please, everyone. Um, <laughs> good morning to you, Whitney. You say good morning, tuning in from Sugarland, Texas. Awesome to see you here. Thank you for being here. And happy Wednesday to you, Wonder Woman. Um, I love love, love that I was able to highlight you today. So happy Wednesday to you and happy Wednesday to everyone that's watching. Hello mm -hmm. to Alice who found Wonderland. <laughs> Greetings from the piney woods of East Texas in a little place called Hideaway. Oh, I love that. You guys have such epic names where you live. This is so awesome. Mm -hmm. So good morning to you. Thank you for being here. And again, hello, Karen. She says, hi, Inga. I had multiple reminders, so I wouldn't miss you today. Greetings from the piney woods of East Texas. Thank you for being here, Karen. Happy Wednesday to you and happy third Wednesday of Manufacturing Month. Can you believe it's already been that long? This is insane. And thank you, Whitney, for confirming. I see what you said. And you as well, Karen. Thank you. And good morning to you, Diane. Thank you for tuning in. Awesome to see your name here as well. Hello to you, Raven from South Africa. Thank you for tuning in. Nice to see you here too. And of course, we have the king of process. Hello, Dave. Thank you for being here. Nice to see you. If you're watching live, please drop me a comment and let me know uh, that you're watching and where you're tuning in from. I'd love to be able to acknowledge you. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to our friends at M&I for helping us put all of this together. Um, it's my privilege and my honor to be here to, uh, on their behalf to bring you this course to help you to level up. So we will be talking about leveraging LinkedIn. With me, of course, the Networking Ninja. Um, so I'm happy to see all of you. <laughs> Dave says, LinkedIn Live continues to cooperate with all of us today. Awesome. I'm glad that it's cooperating. And hello to you, Mohammed. Thank you for tuning in from Bangladesh. Nice to see you here. I hope you can glean some information that will help you to leverage LinkedIn. So... Without further ado, let's get started. I mean, I, I'm sure you didn't come here to chat with me. Let's talk about leveraging LinkedIn. Ah, 
something is not right with my slide, guys. One second. There we go. Okay, so this is an m &I University course, and we're talking leveraging LinkedIn with me. Um, let's, you know, if you haven't met me, just quickly, I'm a wife, a mom of three girls. I'm a lover of people. I'm an entrepreneur. So many things, but the most important thing that you need to know about me right now is that I am a LinkedIn enthusiast. I love LinkedIn and I love to share my knowledge with my friends. So what do we expect? What can we expect from these sessions? Um, day one, which was October 5th, we spoke about the introduction and why it's important to use LinkedIn as a manufacturer, as an entrepreneur, um, as just a person in general, it is so important to use LinkedIn. And I spoke about that. And if you missed that episode, you can go back in my profile or on my channel, um, my YouTube channel. Um, check it out. It's called Inspiration from Inga if you're watching from LinkedIn. Um, ch check out my channel. You can go back and have a look at that episode. So you can really be convinced why you should be using LinkedIn. Um, October 12th, which was day two, we spoke about the foundation of LinkedIn as well as connecting. Today, we're talking about communicating on LinkedIn. And next week, we will cover collaboration on LinkedIn. Um, and Mohammed says, nice to meet you. Good evening. I'm hearing from Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, Mohammed. So day three, communicating on LinkedIn. So what is communicating on LinkedIn? Can you guys drop me a comment and let me know how you communicate on this platform? Please drop me a comment and let me know. I'll wait to hear from you before we move forward. Um, just want to give a shout out again to our amazing friends at m and Thank you, M and I, um, for putting this amazing platform together to help manufacturers level up. It's awesome to be able to participate in M and I University, and I'd like to nod to my friend in the comments, David Chrysler. He is the king of process, and he is actually teaching something called the process power hour. So if you haven't checked it out, there's one more session with him um, available to sign up for, which is next week, Tuesday. Check it out on m and University's mm -hmm. website, and I'm going to populate it here for you uh, right here. So check out university.mni.net. And there are so many amazing, amazing courses that are available for you. Check them out. You won't be sorry. So let me check out your comments. So Whitney, who is at Welker, says communicating includes posting, sending DMs, commenting on others' posts, participating in groups and live events. And Dave says, thanks for the shout out. My pleasure, Dave. I'm happy to shout you out. You are amazing, which is why we've crowned you the king of process. <laughs> and he says, yes, there's one more session available. Would love to have you join in the fun. There's a game. Yes, there is a game. Um, and he's giving away a prize. So go. Sign. I mean, run. Don't walk to sign up. So that you can maybe benefit and get the prize. Why not? Right? Okay, guys, let's move on. So communicating on LinkedIn can be various things. It's connection requests. That's the first point of contact. Then we have the inbox or DMs. We also have commenting on content um, within groups etc. And also sharing content is another way to communicate. Let me see what Karen says. She says, I make it a habit. 
If someone comes to mind, I send them a quick message to, to check in with them. My feeling is if they came to mind, it is for a reason. So I check in. If I see something that is in their realm, I send it to them. With a note, I saw this and immediately thought of you. I love that. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Karen also says, however, I am awful at posting. <laughs> Please forgive me, Whitney and Inga. That's okay. I think um, really you probably need a strategy to post. Uh, many of us didn't have one and also struggled with it um, until we did. So nothing to forgive. Uh, maybe you just need a conversation with someone that will help you develop your own strategy. And then Whitney says, love that, Karen. It's so nice to let people know you're thinking of them. Yes. Do, does anybody that's watching, do you have a special way that you choose to communicate um, on LinkedIn? If so, let me know. I have a friend. Uh, she's not here today. Um, but I have a friend that actually sends video messages. And as my intro video said, I do hate videos. <laughs> so I really don't. Uh, I really don't like sending them. Um, but my friend does. She sends quite a few intro videos. Anyway, moving along. So why do we communicate on LinkedIn? Does anybody want to hazard a guess or anyone want to weigh in? Um, why do you communicate or why do we communicate on LinkedIn? Dave, <laughs> sorry, wait. Dave, he says, I love using video. Yes, you've sent me some videos explaining different things. And I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> I, I can't. I love it, but I, can't. I love what you do, but I can't do it. <laughs> I love live videos. I don't like recorded videos, really. Um, I love live video because there is no do-over. That's why I'm fine to show up live, but I really hate videos. Anyway, uh, Whitney says, I like to send new connections a video or voice message after connecting, but I am bad about doing it consistently. I hear you. There's a lot. There's a lot to, to be done. Um, so it's not that easy. Karen says DMs first, then connection requests. Oh, that's interesting. DMs first. Is there a reason why you do a DM first, uh, Karen? And I'm guessing you have LinkedIn premium, so you send people a message first. But is there a reason? Um, yeah, video messages are... It's awesome to receive. It's nerve-wracking for me to create one, to be honest. Um, and if you really want to know about video messages, send Katie a message. <laughs> She'll tell you. And Dave says, I use Loom to make them, but there are lots of tools to do the same thing. Yeah. And Karen says, to build on the connection you established with the connection request. Yes. Oh, okay. Karen says, DMs to the people I am already connected with. Okay. I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay, so here's why. If you have a look at this quote, it says, Communication to a relationship is like oxygen is to life. Without it, it dies. If you want to foster a relationship with someone, anyone, whether it's a business relationship, you need to communicate with them, right? So that is by Tony A. Gaskins Jr. So why communicate on LinkedIn? First, it is to build relationships. Next, to add value. So you know how Karen said, She'll send somebody a message when they when she thinks of them and comes across something that's interesting. She'll send that is adding value. Um, to draw people to your profile. That's another reason why. 
Um, because if you think about it, when you when you make a comment, people then see your tagline and they could be intrigued by it. And then, you know, like if you add the hashtag uh, king of process in your tagline, people will be like, oh, let me check out this person's profile, right? Um, and then to be top of mind, to establish thought leadership. So how do we communicate on LinkedIn? There are so many ways um, that are, you know, or so many tips I can give you for sure. I think one way that we need to remember, one thing that we need to remember is that communicating on LinkedIn can be, or on any social media platform, should be similar to how you show up in person. Um, so be real, customize your messages. So, you know, for instance, just changing the name or putting in somebody's name when you're communicating with them is so important, right? Because it makes them realize that you're communicating with them, not sending a mass message. So customize your messages, be responsive, do your research. When you're um, communicating with someone, you know, Show them that you are being attentive to who they are. And it's not just a generalized message. Be targeted. Be careful with your intros. So don't just introduce anyone to somebody that you know. Um, and I love this acronym, which is KISS. And that is keep it short and simple. Number eight is proofread. Make sure that you don't send over any spelling errors. You know how it is with autocorrect. So it's important to make sure that you proofread. Then number nine for me is the golden rule. Give more than you take. And number 10, be courteous. And you may think that's like a duh thing to say, but not many people are courteous in their communication with others. Okay, so let's move on to content. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite. Um, so how do we share content? Here we go. To be interesting, you need to be interested. So to be interesting, be interested. And that's by... Dale Carnegie. And before I move on, I want to acknowledge with me your comment. Yes, be a giver. Yes, thank you. Um, so to be interesting, you must be interested. So first of all, when, when, when somebody communicates with you, um, like if you're sharing content, someone connects, uh, someone comments on your content or someone sends you something, read the full communication first, make sure that you fully comprehend it and then respond. Okay. Um, and, or if you're going to create content based off of somebody's communication, make sure that you read the full con communication, make sure when you share content or even when you communicate on LinkedIn to add value as Karen already pointed out. Keep it relevant to you. So don't speak about something that is not your um, area, right? Like not, so I am somebody who shares about LinkedIn. I speak about LinkedIn. I will not be talking about bookkeeping. I will not be talking about process. That is outside of my zone of genius, right? Um, so make sure it's relevant to you. Be professional. Be civil. Yes, I do need to say it. <laughs> um, be generous, gracious, and polite. Check for grammar and spelling. Avoid big blocks of text. 
and don't use all caps. Okay, so here's an example of some communication that I came across um, where somebody that I know actually commented on someone's post and they basically, one of the things that I want to point out, if you look at the blue text, that means that they tagged the person when they commented. And it's simple to do. It's you include an at sign before their name. And what it does is, to be honest with you, tagging drives up viewership. So if you want more eyes on your content, make sure you tag. If you want to support somebody else's content, make sure you tag. Um, tagging drives up viewership but it also shows that you know the right way to respond okay so here he said you know he didn't say something like great post thanks for sharing we need to make sure that we don't just comment in a generic manner because what happens then is it seems like you're just copying and pasting. And I, I get it. You want to support a lot of people's posts, but it comes across as you being inauthentic and insincere. We want to make sure that we are sincere and we are real when we're commenting and not comment like a bot. Um, are you guys still with me? <laughs> I don't see any comments, so I'm I'm not sure. But you know, those that is so important. And if you look at this uh, comment, he wrote, "This is Osama. Um, it's a friend of mine, and he said, Jamal, I love this brother. He is impeccably making an impact on all mankind with his aura, caliber, and kindness." Thank you so much for highlighting one of the most delightful souls, my brother. Bless your heart and bless your world, Reggie Waterman. So he tags two people. And then the response is also um, very, very specific to him, right? Thank you, Karen. She says, busy taking notes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now look at this this comment. Um, Raj says, what a powerful show. You both are stars of the show. Such deep insights about life journey. Thank you so much um, for empowering and spreading positive light on LinkedIn family. And then Claudia responds. She tags him. But she really is real in her response. It's not cookie cutter. That's what I'm trying to highlight um, through what I'm showing you. And again, here's something else. When Nasreen, she says, it takes a really strong person to express the emotions, especially crying. It's really relieving to sometimes let out emotions through tears. I love the song, image, and post content. Always here for you, Mickey. You are never alone. And she speaks about really showing up vulnerably, right? And when you show up with vulnerability, what happens is it allows people to connect with you heart to heart. It allows people to get to know you as a person, not just your content or not just what's on the surface. It's so important to show up authentically. And here's another one. I just wanted to show you this. So here's another one where somebody really goes in and makes a, a, a comment that adds value, not just something superficial. This is a post I'm going to turn off. Uh, I'm going to remove myself. So this is a post that I saw on LinkedIn uh, last night. And this gentleman speaks about being sick. But what I want to especially point out to you is that he wrote for readability. 
So if you look at the post, it's not big blocks of text. And what that does is it allows people to read a line, have a space, read a line and have a space. And it, it allows people to take in what you're saying faster. Um, also, I noticed that selfies are uh, are big right now on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not sure why I'm not a selfie kind of person. Um, but what it does is it allows them to see you. So connecting your face with your post. Um, and just quickly, I'll read the post to you in case you can't see it. But it says, being sick over the last two weeks was not fun at all. For anyone not aware, I had an infection, not COVID, caused by a virus related to the flu. Aside from a fever, sore throat, and lightheadedness, I lost my voice, literally. I didn't know when it would return, and I'm thankful to be on a steady mend after nine restless nights. It hasn't been easy, but if there's one thing that's kept me at ease, it's this. You do not owe anyone anything for being absent here. Oh, I love this. Choose yourself. Respect your time. Ensure a peace of mind. Find your voice. That is the post. That's all he said. It He said so little, but so much, right? Here's another one that I want to point out. Um, this is actually a video post. But I just wanted to show you also like the text in the post. It's very short and concise. It helps with readability. And what he has is a board in front of him that shows what he's talking about. And, you know, so anybody that's scrolling, that notice, that will, you know, come across this post in their feed, they'll see that. And if they're interested in Microsoft Dynamics GP, they will stop and watch the video. So you want to make sure that you actually um, interrupt people scrolling. And so your, your post should be eye-catching. Here is another post that I love. Um, and it will it also speaks to what we're going to cover next week, which is collaboration. But it's basically, it's a group post that's highlighting a person. Um, so if you have a look, they're just talking about somebody who is an inspirational tomato farmer and founder of a farm in Uganda. So this is what, what the post is about. And it, I accompanied the picture along the side so that you can see but basically it's very colorful and it will interrupt your scrolling so that you can stop and support the post that said though text only posts also do very well on linkedin it just depends on what is in the text have a look at this isn't this interesting it's a little character and that really draws your attention and then when you see that the the text that accompanies the post is not a lot you'll stop and read it right so she all she's saying is question for any hiring managers or recruiters in my network why are some job posts so full of acronyms that it's impossible to figure out what the job actually entails I'm not look, looking at obscure job titles or positions either. Please explain acronyms the first time they're used in a position description, especially if it's unique to your, to your organization. Otherwise, I'm like JK, LOL, IDK, TTYL. <laughs> that you get my point. Um, it's short, concise excellent for readability and it's accompanied by an image that will really draw your attention so when you live your life in alignment with a purpose that is centered on selflessly 
adding value for others. Opportunities become abundant and your life becomes fulfilled. So I encourage you to, in your communication, whether it is content that you're sharing, whether it's comments that you're making on somebody else's content, whether you're sending somebody a DM, always strive to add value for that person. So I'm back. Do we have any questions? I want to look at this one comment that Karen made. She says, I struggled for a long time to show up in a vulnerable way, afraid it would be used against me later on. Talk about working on changing your mindset. I love that. It's not easy to show up vulnerably. Um, but the ROI comes in spades, really. So good for you, Karen. Thank you for sharing that. Um, do we have any questions? This is, we've reached the end of this module. So I want to take in any questions and answer anything that you would like to ask me. Um, while I wait, oh, I will, um, I'd like to play my intro video for you again, just in case, but I want to say hello to you. Hello, James. Thank you for popping in and anybody that's interested, Gail will be on James's, um, James's broadcast at 12 p.m. EST, which is in half an hour. James is interviewing Gail Robertson of Gail Now. So please pop in if you can to support Gail and James and listen in on the conversation. It's always interesting when the interviewer becomes the interviewee. So I'm definitely going to be there. So I'll see you there. I'll see you soon, James. Thank you for popping in. And guys, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Drop me a comment. If you missed um, last week's episode, last week's session, I covered connecting as well as the, the foundation of LinkedIn. I also included a link in that broadcast asking you to send me your information if you would like access to a free resource, which was a checklist to help you build your foundation on LinkedIn. If you didn't get it, go back to that episode, check out that link, and let me know. Um, sign up, and I will definitely, definitely send you the free resource. While I wait for you to drop me some questions, I'm going to play my intro video for you again, just in case you don't know who I am. <laughs> Bear with me and I'll be right back. I hate videos. Now you may be wondering, if I hate videos, what the heck am I doing here? just waiting for some questions. If there are any questions, please drop me a comment and let me know. Oh, I see. <laughs> Karen says, oh, how do you strike the balance between business, personal, and humor? 
Are you speaking about me specifically? Because if you're talking about me specifically, I, um, I think for me, I've just let go and realize that I have to be myself. Um, and whether there's a balance or not, I don't really care. <laughs> I can't have a, I can't strive for balance. They, um, I just need to be myself. I need to be who I am, show up authentically, um, and just show, show myself. Uh, okay. Karen is saying when creating content. Okay. Um, when creating content, uh, I don't really share too much about what I do because, I don't want to shove that down people's throats. Um, I prefer to, you know, I'll share a little bit. I'll, I'll just, I'll introduce myself. And it's just, it's like a conversation, right? Like when you meet somebody in person, you don't talk about everything that they do. You really weave that in maybe if, if there is a gap for it in the conversation. But what I like to do when it comes to content is I like to share about things that interest me. Um, but particularly, I'm not very fond of shoving too much down people's throats, to be honest with you. Uh, I see Whitney says, it's Beaker. I love him on the Muppets. Yes, Beaker is awesome. I'm going to pop into LinkedIn and drop you guys the link. If you'd like to sign up, um, if you haven't already signed up and you'd like to sign up for um, what I'm, what I'd like to give you this week, make sure one second, what I want to give you this week so that it's just a guide to sharing content, really. Um, so I'm just dropping the comment in there, and you can click on it if you haven't. If you haven't yet, I've dropped the link. And let me know if you need, if you'd like me to give you um, that guide. Really, it's about communication on LinkedIn, how to um, and how to show up. So I'm sure that will help. But does anybody else have any questions or comments before I wrap this up and give you back some time um, so that we can do it before we approach the hour? Let me know. If not, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And I look forward to next week. Let me show you. I look forward to next week collaborating on LinkedIn. Well, that's what we will be covering and wrapping up these sessions. So I see, I think Karen. Karen, you said, what if you already responded to the Google form? If you already responded to the Google form, I can send you the um, the document. I know I sent the checklist that I had promised last week. I sent it this morning. Um, so you will have received it and hopefully it'll help you walk through showing up and putting in the time to really get into your foundation and connect with others. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll see you back here next week for the last session. Can you believe Manufacturing Month will be over? This is insane. How did October go by so quickly? Thank you again to our awesome friends at m and I. We appreciate you for putting on this amazing event, um, m and I University. If you haven't already checked out other courses that are being offered through there, please do. You can go there by 
um, visiting this website, university.mni.net. Drop by, sign up. There are some amazing courses um, and definitely you can learn. And even if you already know the content, trust and believe you will learn something. And hey, guess what? It's an opportunity to network with others. So take the bull by the horns, jump right in and enjoy other sessions. Again, if you are watching, please connect with each other. It is always a pleasure to have, um, have you here. So thank you for being here. Take care. Be blessed. And I'll see you back here next week for the final session of Leveraging LinkedIn with the Networking Ninja. Take care now. Bye-bye.